Hey, this is the turtle for ReadyHiker.com, and we're out here on the trail. And this is another one of our series of videos for you. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about first aid kits. And I'm going to show you what I have. Now, as a former EMT and husband to a nurse, I often get asked, "Hey, Dave, what do you have in your first aid kit?" And well, today I'm going to show you. Now, by no means is this the be-all, the end-all, and this should not be substituted for any medical advice that you can receive from a doctor or, or licensed nurse. So here's what I got. Now you can go out to different uh, pharmacies or convenience stores and pick up this and pick up first aid kits. Now I chose not to and here's why. Uh, most of the stuff that I have in my first aid kit is readily available at my house. Um, Band-aids, uh, antibiotic ointment, things like that. Keep those things around your house and use it for your first aid kit. Now, I just have my first aid kit in this little sunglass case. Um, the reason I like it is because it's got a little clip. I can attach it to the outside of my backpack, keep it inside. I can even attach it to a belt loop if I don't have a pack. When you open mine up here, one of the first things that I have that pops right out is uh, instant glue. We can't call it super because that name's Patton. But anyway, we have instant glue here. This is used for uh, major cuts. We don't want to suture things up because if you take somebody into the hospital, they're going to have to debreed all that stuff and it just makes a mess. Use this instant sealer. To, to seal up any wounds and it will allow you to take someone into the hospital and they can they can easily remove this stuff uh, with some uh, lotion that they have. Next thing I have is just a roll of one inch gauze. We can use this for uh, lacerations to your fingers, lacerations to your arms. Um, it's not very wide so there's not a whole lot in here but in an emergency it's gonna it's gonna work out really well. I have is some hand sanitizer. Uh, this comes in a spray form. It's got a little clip on here. You can put it in your pocket. Uh, use this to uh, clean out wounds and even clean your hands before you start helping somebody out. I also have a little pocket mask here for mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation inside here. I can't show you the other side. It's got a logo on there that they won't let us use. But you can pick these up at um, emergency response locations such as um, the cross, the red one, as well as uh, just medical supply stores. I have a pair of bandage scissors, and the reason I have bandage scissors is because you don't want anything sharp around a wound. If you put a knife or something to try to cut off somebody's pants or shirt, you might accidentally uh, cut them and make it even worse. So get a pair of bandage scissors. Small ones are preferred. Uh, these ones are metal and they just fit right inside my little case. Along those lines I also have a pair of tweezers to pull out uh, small rocks and pebbles outside of uh, uh, knee wounds if, if you fall down. Also pull out splinters, cactus needles, things like that. Get, a, get yourself a, a, a sturdy pair of tweezers. Next I have some little pills here, some anti-diarrheals. Um, I use these very infrequently. Uh, I often don't take food that's going to cause me an upset stomach, but you may come across somebody on the trail who needs them and have three or four of them, give them to them, and, and they'll be happy as clams. Next thing I have is a little case here of bandages, ointments, um, antiseptic wipes, things like that. Um, I just have this little case here. I just have this little case. Uh, provides uh, protection. It's not water. It's not waterproof, but it's water resistant in case I go into a lake or something. Um, keep these around. You can even use these around the campfire and wash your hands at night. One of the things I want to mention about bandages: you can buy all kinds of bandages out there. You can buy knuckle bandages. You can buy butterfly bandages. Keep it simple. Get some some. Uh, one and three quarter by three quarter inch bandages. And if you need to make a knuckle bandage, cut the thing up on either side and, and lay it over your knuckle. If you need a suture bandage, if you need a butterfly bandage, 
cut the thing right in half and then just lay it across there. It'll, it'll do the same thing and you don't need to go out and spend that extra money. Uh, next thing I have is another uh, waterproof bag, water resistant bag, uh, with some 2x2 two two gauze as well as some moleskin. If you're, if you're a hiker, you know what moleskin is. Keep this on hand, keep it in your first aid kit, you never know when those blisters are going to pop up. Next I have is tape. Uh, it's just one inch wide tape, medical tape. Um, this obviously can be used for uh, placing gauze on wounds, even uh, uh, taping down clothing, trying to patch up a broken seam on a, on a backpack. It may not work perfectly, but it's going to help you out. I wouldn't use uh, duct tape for any kind of wounds, even though you could probably use duct tape for everything else. It leaves that adhesive on there and could cause problems a little later. One of the other things that I have in my first aid kit, uh, actually doesn't fit in my kit, but I have it as well, is this thermal blanket. Um, even out here on just a one day hike, if I get caught up near the top and I twist my ankle or I break a knee, um, I'm gonna be stuck up there. And here on the coast it gets really cold. This thermal blanket is gonna keep me from getting hypothermia overnight, especially as the fall and winter come along. So make sure you have one of these. Um, know how to use them and make sure that they're readily available in your pack so that if you do go down, you're not gonna have to scramble around looking for this thing. Uh, the last thing I have here is just a rubber band. Let me open it up for you. If you've ever donated blood or having to give blood, these little bands are what they use on your arm. What do I use this for? Well, in case of an amputation of some kind, or I can't staunch the flow of blood on a laceration or a scrape with direct pressure. I use this as a last resort to stop that blood flow. You don't have to use your belt or somebody else's belt or a shoestring. Use this and it'll work out well for you. Now again, this is certainly not the be all to end all the first aid kits by any means. You can certainly buy them out there. They're readily available. They come in kits. Here's one here, uh, bright yellow so you can see it everywhere. Uh, inside, again, water resistant packaging, tape, gauze, squeezers, antibiotic, all that stuff is in here. Um, there's even a little card in here to register it. So you can get replacement parts for it. But, as I said, uh, you certainly can put your own together. Very inexpensive. You can go out and buy them ready made. Uh, I chose my route because of my, my history and my accessibility to uh, get these items. Um, anyway, get yourself a first aid kit. Use it every time you hit the trail. Don't leave it in your car, don't leave it at home. You never know who you're gonna come across and you might be able to help them out. Um, again, this is not medical advice. We're not telling you what to buy. We're just telling you that you should go out and get something. Make yourself a ready hiker. And remember, don't be that guy.